Hi, this is John with John's Workshop. Welcome back to another episode. In our last episode, we were working on this 1961 Rolls-Royce distributor that I had gotten off on eBay as a kind of a test. And we were looking at it on the oscilloscope and we saw some odd behavior. Pulses were not of the same width and we knew something was wrong. And in this episode, I'm gonna show you how we can use an Arduino here to quantify the issues with the distributor and how then we can adjust this to resolve as many of those issues as are possible. The overall setup looks like this. So here's the unit that rotates the distributor and generates the pulses coming out of here. And then I've got the Arduino in here along with a little breadboard with the LCD display on there. And then I've got the oscilloscope back here and the laptop here. The laptop is really not necessary. I do have a few diagnostics coming back to print out on the screen, but for the most part, everything you really need to know is coming out here on the LCD display. To revisit the problem that we saw last time, I'm gonna show you the oscilloscope trace here. The yellow is that once per revolution pulse that we get from the disc, and then the purple is the points. So when they're up here, the points are both open, and uh, when it's down here, either one of the two points is closed. And what we saw last time was that there were these non-uniformities in this trace indicating something wasn't quite right. But in order to figure out what the angles are when the points are opening, which is when the cylinder, uh, when the spark plug fires each cylinder, uh, we have to do some math. We could put the cursors on here and we could try to measure time. We know it's 360 degrees to go one revolution here. And so we could look at the time uh, between pulses here and we could figure out what the angle is. And like I was saying last time, that's a lot of work. Uh, and I'd rather have the computer do that. And that's what we're gonna do here with the Arduino. So show you that. So I've got the signals that are coming out of the this distributor uh, rotating device here. And we've got just a signal for the, the points, which was the purple and the disc, uh, which was the yellow. And we're just feeding them in here. I just put the Arduino uh, in this box here just to make it a little easier. So we've got some connectors on here. Scope probes are here uh, to show you that the scope traces we were just looking at. And then the Arduino itself uh, is in here and it is uh, using these signals then to do the timing. Looking at the uh, manual for the Rolls-Royce, you can see the firing order here, which was uh, A1, B1, so that's the first cylinder in the A bank, and then the first cylinder in the B bank, and so on and so forth. So that gives us the firing order. Uh, another interesting uh, point here is that the dwell angle uh, should be 34 degrees uh, at uh, 20 thousandths of a gap. So that's the other um, spec number. You can see the gap here is in the 20 thousandths range. And so if we draw a diagram of the distributor, so I've got a diagram shown here, and this would be where cylinder number one would fire, which in this case would be A1. And then we know there's eight cylinders, so we have 45 degrees between each one. So if you look at the first one would fire here, the second one would fire here, the third one would fire here. So this is 45 degrees, 90 degrees, and then you'd have 135, 180, 225, 270, 315, and then we're back to cylinder one. So that's where these cylinders should be firing. And the question is, is are they really doing that or not? And that's where we can use the Arduino to time how long it takes uh, between firing cylinder one and firing cylinder two. Uh, and if we know the RPM, then we know the time it takes for 360 degrees. Uh, we measure the time it takes to that first pulse and we can find out how many degrees it is here. So we can figure out whether the cylinders are being fired at the right times. The other thing we can look at is how long the points are closed so we can get the angle, the dwell angle, and we can actually get it for each individual cylinder. Uh, and the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how different are these values from time to time. Uh, every time the distributor goes around, it's gonna be a little bit different. Uh, and we're going to be able to tell how much variability there is from uh, pass to pass. So 
So I'm starting up the uh, device to rotate distributor, and you can see here it is. Points opening and closing there, so pulses are being generated. Uh, they're being sent in here. We're looking at them on the oscilloscope here, but we're also looking at them with the Arduino. And so I got the Arduino running in a couple of different modes, where in this mode here, uh, with the blue LED on, it's just telling us what the RPM is and what the advance is. And the advance is kind of arbitrary number here. It just is the time between the disk pulse and the first cylinder firing. So it relates to uh, when did my disk pulse pass versus when did my first cylinder fire. And I've got this set up in the machine so that this is the A1 cylinder. And that just happens to be also the cylinder that is on the fixed points, not the ones that move. Uh, and so this just tells you that advance angle. And the, the reason uh, that's important is because as we speed the distributor up, that will get smaller, which means there's more uh, advance. The first cylinder is happening sooner. So I'll give you an example here as we speed this up. see the advance is getting smaller. I have a button up here and when I press this it switches me into a different mode of operation here. I've got a green LED that's flashing. When that LED is on it's taking one pass of data. A pass of data the way I defined it was a revolution of the disk to get the RPM and then another revolution to get the distributor pulses and that would be one pass. So what I'm doing in the Arduino is I'm taking 10 passes to try to get a good average. Uh, so I get 10 good passes and I kind of look to see the data uh, if it's good or not and I throw out the ones that are bad. So I get 10 good passes and then I produce an average and that's what you see here. So the average RPM, average advance, and then I have a, a dwell display that shows the dwell angles for each of the eight cylinders. This is the angular error in degrees for each of the eight cylinders. And then this is the variation, and that's in hundredths of a degree. Uh, so this is essentially just the standard deviation, but it tells you something about the variability. So the first one is zero by definition. That's always zero. That's our reference. Uh, but then as you go down cylinders, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you get, uh, as much as here, I guess the biggest one is uh, 67 hundredths. So that's 0 0.67 degrees of variability. So that's the uh, standard deviation for that uh, angular error. So there is there is some jumping around. And one of the reasons things jump around is because the points do have some, what's called switch bounce, or they're, they're, it's not a direct um, closure. There's a little bit of noise. To show you what that noise looks like, I'm going to switch things around a little bit here. So we're going to, instead of triggering on that yellow pulse, we're going to trigger on channel 2, which is the purple pulse. Now we're triggering on that, uh, on the purple. So we're really uh, looking at a rising edge, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put it on alternating. And then I'm going to zoom in. So you can see what these purple pulses look like. So we're alternating uh, rising edge, falling edge, rising edge, falling edge here. And you can see as we zoom in there, if you look at those purple, and I'm going to just uh, sort of pause it here for, for a moment here, and then we'll kind of look back at some of these pulses. Um, so if you look at that pulse, it looks really clean. That one looks very clean too. That's the turning on. And uh, I guess I'll just point out that this pulse here is when the points open. And those are usually pretty clean, pretty square, looking like that. Um, look, there's, a, there's an example of one that's got a little bit of a wiggle in it. But you'll also notice that it's curved up here. Uh, this is a pretty tight time scale here. Uh, I've got 100 microseconds per division. So that's 100 microseconds from here to here. Um, but you also know this that's curved and that's the condenser or the capacitor really uh, that's charging up. The thing to notice is that we've got a little pulse here which is uh, due to contact bounce. So it didn't open all the way. There's a, 
There's a clean one. Here you can see another bounce. Some of them uh, are worse than others, but you can see there's a little bit of a bounce there too. Uh, and I'm just flipping through here. There that you could see was uh, you got a definite bounce there. And depending on how much bouncing you get here, uh, you can the, the Arduino can count the wrong the wrong thing. Like if it's looking for a rising edge, it can catch this, and then there's another falling edge here. Uh, and so we tend to throw out uh, I throw out those passes. Uh, there's a nice clean one. There's a pretty clean one there too. Uh, so uh, uh, checking that in the in the code in the Arduino to see. Uh, if we've got a bad pass or not, and if we've got something that's really messed up the timing, uh, then I throw it out. As we saw, every other cylinder had an angular error to it. So that means that this points, set of points, and this set of points are not 45 degrees apart. So as I mentioned earlier, these are the fixed points, and that's cylinder number one, which was A1 starts here and then the very next cylinder that's going to fire is with these points and this plate right here uh, can rotate so there's a screw here and oh that actually is already loose there that's interesting this is the uh, other screw and that was a little tighter there we go uh, and then this is the screw that allows them to adjust. So if I adjust, I just moved it a tiny bit there. You can almost see how much this plate moved here. Uh, I'm trying to get it earlier, which means moving it uh, in, the, in the clockwise direction since this turns counterclockwise here. So I just made a, a movement here of that plate and then I'll take some data to see what that did. Okay, I'm adjusting it. It's getting closer. Just adjusting it here as it's uh, while it's rotating. There you can see these numbers here are getting smaller in magnitude, so I'm making a difference. This adjustment here is about as good as we can get it. So here's our reference first cylinder. Then we've got a plus one degree on the next cylinder. So that's the movable. And then this is the fixed. So there's nothing we can do about that minus one error. And then here, this one's on the movable. The, it's like a small number here. Uh, so that one is kind of the same as this one. It's on the same plate. So is this and so is this. So uh, we've got a plus one and a minus one and then some numbers that are pretty close to zero here. Um, these two are on the same fixed uh, points as these two, so there's not much we can do with those. After I got the angular error looking pretty good there, I went back and looked at the dwell angle, and the dwell angle on the cylinders with the movable points was up around 40 degrees. So I think what happened was that that movable point set shifted because as that plate was rotating, it allowed the points to move away from the distributor cam. That high dwell value uh, would indicate that the point gap is too small and the points aren't opening uh, for long enough. And you can see here I've got a 20 thousandths feeler gauge and I'm on the movable set of points and I cannot get it in. So I'm going to increase the gap here, hoping to reduce that large dwell angle. Okay, I've got a 21 thousands feeler gauge that just goes in there the 22 doesn't go through so that's definitely an increase from where it was and we'll see what kind of an impact that has on the dwell angle so you can see the dwell angles are improved so we're down around 33 um, but what we're going to see here in a second is that the uh, you can see the angular errors so now that we've changed the gap we now need to readjust the movable points. After making some small adjustments on that movable plate, I've been able to get some pretty good dwells. See there? That's showing variability, so 0.3 degrees or so. And look at the errors. Uh, angular errors are, are pretty good. Uh, as 
kind of as balanced as I could get them uh, across the range of cylinders there. So I think that's about as good as we can do. And this is the resulting oscilloscope trace. You can see here that the pulses are much more uniform than when we started. Uh, so we knew something was fishy, but it's hard to know how to adjust that uh, because the, the two uh, play back and forth, the gap and then the advance angle of this, the movable points. So you, you gotta be pretty uh, delicate as you're adjusting those. Here's a screenshot of the, the way we started out with this distributor, and you can see the non-uniformity there uh, in the time that the points are open. So we've made quite an improvement comparing to what we just saw in the other scope trace. This shows a shot of the computer screen, which just gives you some more digits of precision here. Um, so we've been able to adjust it so that we've got uh, 34 degrees dwell in the first one, 33. 34.8 so you can see they they do change from cylinder to cylinder but they're all right around 34 uh, and then the average angular errors uh, of course is the first one zero by definition and then we've got some pretty small angular errors here you can see this jumps there's like this one is on the movable plate so is this one so there's not much you can do uh, other than to set the plate on the average and then here's back to 0.3 plus, this was minus 0.8, uh, and then uh, minus 0.2. So overall, that's pretty good in terms of uh, about as good as we can do relative to uh, adjustments we can make here. This gives you an idea of the standard deviations for the, for the uh, 10 samples that made up those averages. So you can see we're pretty, pretty good. Maybe, maybe you've got like 1.14 degrees or so variability. Uh, here, 0.15 is kind of the worst um, in this particular pass. So that would be about maybe 0.3, uh, you know, degrees of crankshaft, which really isn't too bad. Um, so anyway, this is uh, this is about as good as we're going to be able to do here. When I started working on this project, I thought that the two sets of points were pretty much independent. But then as I'm adjusting things, you can see they kind of depend on each other because like this one is closed and this one's open. I'm rotating it slowly by hand. And you can see now this one's still open and this one's opening, which that's the time when, since these are in parallel, whoever's closed is gonna, is gonna cause that purple trace to go down. So here they have to both be open in order uh, to, to fire the uh, cylinder. So it's not just one doing something and the other doing something. Here you can see this one is now all the way open. Uh, and then as he starts to close here, you can see this guy starts to open here. Uh, and so there's an interplay between these two. And as you're adjusting the plate and adjusting the gaps, you can uh, actually uh, change things that you might not think you're changing uh, in terms of which cylinder is firing. So this is about as well as we can get this adjusted based on our measurements. So now that we have this plate adjusted and the two points, we're gonna take a look at the advance curve. To get the advance curve, we just have to look at the RPM and the advance in degrees and look at that as it changes with RPM. And uh, like I said, this advance is just kind of a, a, a rough number the way I've got it set up here. It really just depends on how it's set in the in the system. What's really important is how this changes with RPM. So I'm gonna turn the speed up. You can see it's 21 degrees, 22 degrees here. And then as I increase the speed to 400 RPM, you can see it's dropped. As we continue on up, you see it's 15. So 600 RPM, 700. So 700 RPM would be 1400 RPM in the engine. You can see we're continuing to advance. It's 1200. So we don't really get much past three. So that minimum of three was the uh, the most advanced we're going to get today. 
This is the workshop manual for the Silver Cloud 2, and it shows a curve here of advance versus distributor RPM, and it shows the band in which the distributor uh, advance is supposed to fall, and so we can check that uh, against the data we just took. When I plot that data of advance, degrees of advance, versus the distributor RPM, I get these red points here, and then in Excel here, I've just put that figure in the background, and that way we can see how we fit within this band, and we actually do fit in the band uh, the entire range of RPM. So this says that the centrifugal advance mechanism is working properly in the distributor. If you're still watching, thanks for hanging out through the whole video. I'm glad you got a chance to see how this Arduino can do all the hard work for you to assess the pulses in the distributor. So with this test distributor that I got from eBay, we saw that every other cylinder was off by about six degrees of distributor, which would be 12 degrees of crankshaft, which is pretty significant. So if we had put this in a car in its current state when I received it, it's not gonna to run too well. Uh, certainly be suboptimal. So our next step is Chris just got his distributor back from the rebuilder and so we're going to put his distributor in here and we're going to check and see how well that rebuilder did at getting everything set up. So he was replacing bushings. I'm not sure what else he did. He may have straightened the shaft here. So we're going to see how well uh, that rebuilder did. So thanks for watching and as usual if you have any comments or questions please leave them down in the comments window. Thanks for watching.